Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at resonance structures. We're going to talk about what resonance actually is, what we mean by resonance structures, and why resonance can give molecules and ions stability. Before we talk in detail about resonance, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Covalent bonds form when two atoms share a pair of electrons, and the negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positively charged nuclei of the bonded atoms. This attraction holds the atoms close together, creating a bond. A single bond involves one pair of shared electrons, a double bond involves two pairs, and a triple bond involves three pairs. A molecule is formed when atoms covalently bond together, forming groups or units. A polyatomic ion is usually a small molecule that has an overall charge. For example, a carbonate ion contains three oxygen atoms covalently bonded to a central carbon atom, and the four atoms share an overall charge of 2 minus. Dot and cross diagrams are a way of representing bonding in a molecule or ion, using dots and crosses to represent electrons from each atom bonded together. A pair of dots or crosses represents a pair of electrons. If only dots are used, the diagrams are called Lewis diagrams, and the structures they refer to are called Lewis structures. Recap done? Let's go! When drawing dot and cross diagrams, or Lewis structures, sometimes there is more than one possible arrangement of bonds between atoms. For example, in the molecule ozone, O3, there are three atoms of oxygen bonded together. If we draw this out, there are actually two different ways we could represent the bonding. To make things easier to follow, let's label each oxygen atom as A, B, and C. One possibility shows a double bond between oxygen atoms A and B, with a single bond between B and C. The other possibility swaps the positions of the single and double bonds. By labelling the oxygen atoms, we can see that each structure is actually unique and isn't the same as the other. So if this ozone molecule can be considered as having two possible structures, which is the right one? The answer is neither on its own. As strange as it sounds, these structures don't actually exist. They are just ways we can represent the bonding. And this is confirmed by experimental data, which shows all oxygen-oxygen bond lengths in a molecule of ozone are equal. Now, this wouldn't be the case if ozone truly had one single and one double bond, as single and double bonds have different lengths. The actual true structure that will exist will be a hybrid of the two, and is referred to as a resonance hybrid. And the two possible structures we've drawn are called resonance structures. To represent the resonance hybrid, we draw a dotted line between all three oxygen atoms that are singly bonded together, showing that electrons aren't fixed in one position and are delocalized between the three oxygen atoms. Now, in general, the more resonance structures a molecule or ion has, the more stable it is and the more likely it is to exist. This is because more resonance structures means more possible delocalization of electrons. This enables electron density to be spread out throughout the whole molecule or ion, reducing instability caused by localized charges. For example, in a carbonate ion, there is one carbon atom covalently bonded to three oxygen atoms, and the four atoms share a negative charge of 2-. There are several ways the oxygens can be bonded to the carbon atom, given several resonance structures. Again, to make things easier to see, let's label each oxygen atom as A, B, and C. In the first, there could be a double bond from the carbon to oxygen A, and single bonds to oxygens B and C. This arrangement would give oxygens B and C a negative charge each as, to complete their outer shell, each would have had to have gained an electron from somewhere else. In the second, there could be a double bond between oxygen B and the carbon atom, and now single bonds to oxygens A and C. And again, the single bonded oxygens would have a negative charge each. And finally, you may have guessed this, there could be a double bond between oxygen C and the carbon atom, with single bonds between oxygens A and B. 
giving oxygens A and B a negative charge. Now these may look identical to you, however remember each of these oxygen atoms are technically individual, meaning in one carbonate ion there are three possible ways of bonding the oxygen atoms to the central carbon atom. None of these resonance structures is actually the correct structure of a carbonate ion, but each one contributes to the true structure, the resonance hybrid. As a result, it is more accurate to represent the carbonate ion with a delocalized charge, showing dotted lines alongside the single bonds. This means the double bonding electrons are delocalized throughout the whole carbonate ion, and the negative charges on each oxygen atom are therefore shared around. They don't belong to one atom as in the resonance structures. This ability to move the negative charge or share it around the ion makes the ion more stable, lower in energy and more likely to exist. Whilst all resonance structures contribute to the real structure of a molecule or ion, some are more probable than others. To identify the structure that contributes most to the resonance hybrid, we use a concept called formal charge, which helps us determine the configuration with the lowest possible charges on each atom. We won't be covering formal charge in detail here, but in simple terms it means that the resonance structure with the smallest charges on each atom is generally the most stable and contributes the most to the resonance hybrid. As a final, slightly more advanced point, you may have noticed that only the electron pairs in the double bonds, pi bonding electrons, are involved in delocalization. In contrast, the electron pairs in single bonds, sigma bonding electrons, remain fixed and don't participate. This means that when drawing resonance structures, the sigma bonds must stay in place. Only the pi electrons can shift to create different resonance forms and be delocalized. So, to summarize, very often there are several ways electrons can be arranged and bonds form in molecules or ions. The different structures possible are called resonance structures. In general, the more possible resonance structures that a molecule or ion can have, the greater its stability and the more likely it is to exist. For ions, this is because the charge can be more evenly distributed across the whole structure of the ion. Charge that is delocalized and spread out is more stable than localized charges. When deciding which resonance structure is most stable and contributes most to a resonance hybrid, we use an idea called formal charge. In simple terms, this means the resonance structure that gives the lowest possible charges on all atoms is the most stable. I hope you found this video helpful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.